And boy, are you in for a treat today. Today, I'm going to pull all the concepts I've been working on in all my previous videos to bring together a real life example. I'm going to create a band site. Yes, a band site. And not just any band site. I'm going to give you an Iron Maiden band site because that's my favorite band. And it's going to bring together all the concepts I've been talking about in context. I'm going to show you how to take a business, turn it into business concepts, and then take those business concepts and create a content model and content types that can actually be used in a headless CMS. And the headless CMS I'm going to demonstrate today, the headless CMS I've used, is the Ampliance headless CMS. Yeah! And it couldn't be a better time right now because Iron Maiden have just released their new album, Sensu. So let's get to it. First, we start with the homepage and its components. We display up and coming performances. We have a video gallery and an image gallery. And if we open up the menu, you can see we have a tours section and we have a music section. And you can see the future tours and you can see past tours. You can see releases and songs and lyrics. This homepage and the menu and everything you see is fully managed by the CMS. So if we click through onto the past tours page, you can see a full list of all of the performances in date order. And you can filter all of these performances by year. And you can see the performances are identified by the date and the location, such as the city, the state, and the country. Note the masthead image and the page title are also content managed. If we click on one of the performances, like Sunrise Out in Florida, we can see the performance basic details, but much more than that. We can actually see lists of all the songs that are being played during that performance. So we can see the set list and the encore. And then underneath, you can also see another video gallery and another image gallery. So if we click on one of the songs in the list, like Ace is High, we get to the songs detail page. And here we can see the writer, the lyrics, all the things you would expect in the details of a song. But again, we see a lot more than that. We can actually see the releases and we can see the performances in which that song has been performed in. Not only that, you can see what the last performance was, as well as the first performance and how many performances there were of that song. And if we follow the path to the Futures Tours and click on one of the performances, you can see it's pretty much the same, except you don't have the list of songs. Right, let's take a look at the releases. And here is where we get a list of all the releases, or all the releases I've put in the system right now. And you can also filter the releases by type. And I've set up an albums and a singles type. If you want to add more like videos or live albums, you can also do that in the CMS. And if we click on one of the releases like Sensu, we get to the release details page. Again, we see some simple details about the release, such as the release dates and notes about the release, as well as the main cover image for that release. And I've put the two latest videos that Iron Maiden have released, the Strategio and the Writing on the Wall videos. They're awesome. You really should watch them. Just like the performance detail, you can see there is a list of songs. Again, if you click on one of those song links, you get back to a songs detail page. And finally, if we click on songs and lyrics, we get to a full list of all the songs by alphabetical order. So you can click directly through to a songs detail page. So that's a quick run through of the app to give you some context of what we will be modeling. In this video, we'll only be focusing on the business concepts. We won't go through the modeling of the UX components at this point. If you'd like to see that, write some comments, tell me what you'd like to see, and I'll do another video on that. But before we can start modeling out the content types, let's model out the actual business concepts. First of all, we have a band. And a band can have members. Now, we didn't show that in the demo, but it's something we should consider in the future, especially if you want to do the history of the band or do some blogging about the band members. Bands go on a tour, and bands release their music to buy in the form of albums and singles and other types of packages that you can buy, including videos. All these releases have a curated list of songs, often playlists on physical media like discs, sometimes side one and side two of a disc. And when it comes to a tour, a tour is a series of scheduled performances, usually for a particular year. And we can have past tours with previous performances and future tours with up and coming performances. Now, performances like releases also have lists. They have the set list, which are the agreed songs they'll play in that performance and the encore list. In effect, you can think of the lists on releases and there are lists in performances as the same thing. Now, if you look at the song, it has a writer and that writer could be one of the band members, but that doesn't always make sense, especially if it's a cover version. 
And to finish off the performance concept, we also need to think about its location. And this is where the performance is played. And you can think of that as a hierarchy of country, state and city. And you could even include the venue there if you wish. Although not strictly business concepts, you might want to think about supporting entities such as social videos, performance photos, performance videos, and release images. And these media entities are all reused across songs, performances, and releases. Before we start trying to turn these business concepts into a content model and content types, let's first look at how they're going to be used inside the customer experience, which will ultimately inform how we structure the content. It's really important to understand how the user experience is built so we can understand the kind of queries that need to be done on the content. So first of all, let's look at the types of pages we need. Obviously, there's a homepage for highlighting releases and performances. We need pages to help us navigate through lists of songs, lists of releases, list of tours, and list of performances. We need pages that view the details of songs, the details of releases, and the details of performances. These detailed pages should not bring together just the details of each concept, but bring them to life with associated media such as images and video. So let's see how these pages work together and how customers will flow between each of these pages. Assuming that a customer lands on a home page, the customer would then move to a list of page using the menu to find what they're looking for. They may be looking for a performance they went to see. They may be looking for a performance they want to go and see. They may be looking for an album or a single or even an individual song. And regardless of what they're looking for, whether it's past or future performances, they will go to the same performance detail page. If it was a future performance, we could integrate a booking engine so customers could buy tickets for that performance. And if it was a previous performance, they could see the list of songs that were performed as well as all the associated media. And from this page, they can go to the songs details page where they can see the details like lyrics and writers, etc. And if a customer is interested in a specific release, they'll go to the releases page and filter by album or single and choose the release they're interested in. And this would take them to the release details page. This would show the cover of the release, the notes, and the other lists of songs. And from that list of songs, they could again click into a songs details page. Finally, if the customer just wants to go directly to a song, they can go to the songs and lyrics and see the list of songs in alphabetical order and click directly through to a songs detail page. And the flow doesn't stop here. Customers can link back to releases from the song's detail page as it has the list of releases that that song is in. And you can also link back to a specific performance from the song's detail page as it also provides lists of performances where that song has been performed. At this point, I haven't included any other integrations apart from content, but it's definitely something we could add in the future, such as adding e-commerce transactions to buy songs and buy releases or the bookings engine. And now it's time for the most exciting part of the process, it's time for the content modeling and designing the content types. I'm not going to go through the detail of each content type showing each field. I'm going to go through what content types we need and how they're connected together and what types of links that you use. Later, I'll show you a quick demo of the content types in action, and then you can see the details such as the fields that are used. We'll start by focusing on the primary model of the band. Looking at the flow of pages and the relationship between the concepts, it's best that we model most of the band concepts as a hierarchy. We will start with the first two child content types, tours and release types. The tour content type allows us to create multiple instances of a tour, one for each year, such as 2019, and the release type content type allows users to define different types of releases for the band, such as an album, a single, a video, or even a live album. We now create a performance type which allows users to create a performance that is a child of a specific tour, and a release content type that allows us to create a child of a specific type of release. For example, we can create a performance for Florida and North Carolina for 2019, and the Sensu and the Plow Slave albums. Next, we'll create a content type to represent the lists of songs or a set list. As both releases and performances have lists of songs, which are pretty much the same apart from their label, 
we will create a content type to be used for both. This allows us to create a set list and an encore list for Florida and North Carolina performances, and also a list of songs for disc one and disc two for the two albums, Power Slave and Senjutsu. Next, we're gonna create a content type for the song. Instead of making a part of the hierarchy, like the rest of the content types so far, we're gonna make it standalone. The reason for this is that the song content type has a many-to-many -many relationship with releases and performances. And what I mean by that is the same song such as Aces High can appear in a release such as Power Slave, as well as being performed in two different performances in North Carolina and Florida. If it was in a hierarchy, the user would have to duplicate this song, including the lyrics, which would severely limit its reuse and increase the maintenance burden. So what we'll do is we'll create a set list item content type, which acts as a bridge using a content link between lists for performances and releases and the actual content items themselves. The other benefits are that the names of the songs can also be modified in the setlist item without affecting the song itself, but also allows us to query content in both directions. You can get songs for a specific release and releases for a specific song. For example, the setlists for Florida and North Carolina and Disc 1 of Power Slave can have setlist items that point to the same song, Ace is High. Although the core concepts of the band model have been defined, we haven't covered all the other key aspects of the model. Let's take a look at modeling the location of a performance. Now location is definitely a hierarchical structure with some nuances. First, we create a content type for users to add countries where bands are touring, e.g. the USA or the UK. We then create a state content type for those countries like the USA where they want to represent the state. And finally, we create a content type for the city where the band actually plays in. This can be either a child of the state or a child of a country, such as Sunrise in Florida and London in the UK. We could have gone further and include venues in the hierarchy, but I decided in this case it wasn't necessary and left the venue to be a text field on the performance content type. To complete the model, we connect the performance to the city as a reference. This means that they're loosely coupled together. In the app, it's possible to get the full path of a performance location, search for the performances by location, but the locations and the performance are all managed separately. To fully complete the model, we have two further content types that we need to consider, images and YouTube videos. As I'm using Ampliance, images are uploaded into the Ampliance DAM and are automatically given a base content type definition. Images can also be accessed by the Image API, allowing the developers to dynamically manipulate images on the fly to optimize the experience, such as sizing and cropping. For YouTube videos, we need to create a dedicated content type to capture the YouTube video ID and the YouTube video description. By using this approach for images and YouTube videos, in effect, we create an image and video library. This means we can reuse all the images and videos by linking them to songs, releases, and performances. So now let's take a look at the content types in the Ampliance Headless CMS. First, let's open the band content type, which contains the hierarchical model for the Iron Maiden band. When we open the tree, we can see the content items for the tours and release types which have been created using the tours content type and the release type content type. I've organized the tours by year. By clicking on a performance, we can show all the fields that I've defined that we can edit for the performance details. It also has a list of image links that point to the Ampliance Dynamic Imaging System, as well as lists of links for associated YouTube videos. We can add and we can remove images and videos from these lists. Let's reassign the location to demonstrate how I set up the reference to the location's content model. By clicking on the locations field, you open up the whole location's content model. Okay, let's open up the US, Florida, and select Sunrise City. Now let's take a look at the set list for this performance. And we can see all the set list items attached that represent the songs that were played during the performance. Clicking on Aces High, we can see the link to the actual Aces High song. Remember, from the content model we did, this is not a part of the hierarchy, but a separate content item. If we open up the album release type and select Senjutsu, it also has fields for editing the details for a release. It'll open up with two set lists for disc one and disc two, showing all the songs in this album as set list items. 
Right, let's take a look at the actual locations content model. The content item for this model is called Tour Cities. When we open the content item, we can see the list of countries. If we wanted to, we could easily add another country to this list. You can see that cities can live directly under a country, like Denmark and Copenhagen, whereas the countries like the US have states, then cities, e.g. Florida and Sunrise. Okay, let's have a look at the YouTube content type we use for adding videos. We can see we can add a YouTube ID and a YouTube title. Finally, let's look at one of the key standalone content types, the song content type. Although this is not an Amplian's tutorial, let's look at how we can edit and preview this content. On the right, you can see a preview of the actual Iron Maiden application. To simulate the edit, I'm going to delete and re-enter the name and see how it changes in the live preview. Notice there are no options for adding releases or performances, and this is because they're queried from the band's content model live in the application. This means updating the song here updates it for every single setlist item that references it from every performance and every release. After going through the process of converting business concepts into a content model, what are the insights? What have we learned? First of all, the headlessness of the model allows us to reuse that model in not just this application, but many other applications. It also allows us to use it in any other channel and different types of applications like native applications. One of the other cool things about this model is I could use the same content model for other bands, and I have done. My first attempt was actually a Metallica band. Another insight is that this is a completely different way of modeling an e-commerce site. Rather than trying to take your business concept and then squeeze them into an e-commerce catalog, like you have to do if you take an e-commerce system off the shelf, you can actually model your business concepts the way they need to be, the way that makes sense. The other option that many analysts talk about is experience-driven commerce, but this requires you to use more of a traditional CMS or a DXP, and you have to try and take your business concepts and then model them as pages and page components. In lots of ways, this is even worse because you're trying to bend your business concepts out of shape just to fit inside a page paradigm. One of the cool things is that by separating your business concepts from the experience means you gain far more flexibility. You can independently evolve your user experience without compromising your business model and vice versa. You can actually make updates to your business concepts and evolve your business without actually affecting the user experience. So in summary, Using a headless CMS in this way allows you to model your business rather than being just constrained to the actual constructs within the technology you're using. But that's all we've got time for right now. If you like this video, please remember to show your appreciation, scroll down a little bit and press that like button. But for now, it's time to say thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.